Find out what she knows about that place where Dean is to work. The advertising place, I'm frightfully on making. What on earth do you want me to do that for? Never mind her? why. But she's about as wrecked as a drowned lady. Oh, no. Well, if you insist. And who's that chap she's with, the uh, harlequin? I have no idea. My car, would you? Thank you. darling. It's been ages. Hello, dear. Aren't you going to introduce me to your escort? I think he prefers to remain a mystery. How boring. You're hurting me, Harlequin. Just briefly. Maybe such a bore, Todd. <laughs> Run! Run! Let them catch! 
said I should escort you home. How the devil did Breeden know? I love you, Harlequin. Pity. Your lovers seem to have a knack of coming to bad ends. What? Well, there was young Carruthers. I couldn't help that. He drank too much, the little idiot. Arthur Barrington? I told him it was no good. Not a bit of good, but he tried all the same. Then he blew his brains out. Not that they were very good brains, but they were the only ones he had. Then there was Victor Dean. That little rotter. There was nothing to do with me. Wasn't it? He fell down the staircase. Oh, yes, I did. I wonder why. I haven't the faintest idea. I'm sorry, I thought you might have. Why did you send him about his business? <laughs> he was so terribly boring, just like all the rest. <laughs> Harley Quinn. You like them to be different? I like everything to be different. And when you find them different, you try to make them all the same. Why do you want to know about Victor Dean? How did you pick him up? <laughs> we all went out one night to some frightful sort of suburban dancing place. He thought he'd be such a scream, but it was all really rather dull, and he was there, and he fell for me, and I, I thought he was rather a pet. That's all. A simple story in words of one syllable. How long was he your pet? Oh, <laughs> about six months, but he was so terribly boring and such a prig. <laughs> Imagine, Harlequin, when he got all cross and wanted bread and cheese and kisses. It wasn't any fun. It was all wet. My child, you're telling this story very badly. You made him drink and it upset his little tummy. You made him play high and he couldn't afford it. You tried to make him take drugs and he didn't like it. Anything else? He was a little beast. Honestly, Harlequin, he was out for all he could get. Aren't you? Me? <laughs> I'm terribly generous. I gave him everything he wanted. <laughs> I'm like that. When I'm fond of anybody. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Did Todd send you out to ask me? Nobody ever sends me anywhere. I go where I like. Well, then, why do you all want to know about Victor Dean? All. Too mystery making. Isn't it? Did Milligan know Dean? He'd met him. Through you. Oh, Harlequin. Diane, listen to me. Who you? Harlequin. Then how else? I'm sleepy, Harlequin. Leave me alone. Please leave me alone. Diane, did Milligan know Dean? Leave me alone. <laughs> leave me alone. For the moment. Monthly gathering seems to be well attended, as always. Mr. Breeden's late. Breeden? Oh, yes, the new copywriter. We haven't met. Yeah, Miss Meachard. Perfectly potty. Potty? Mr. Breeden, I mean. Goofy. Goofy. No. He's always up on the roof playing with a catapult. Oh, is he indeed? With a catapult? That doesn't seem quite the thing. Sorry, rest of development, if you ask me. No, not quite what you expect from someone who's been to public school. Precisely what I'd expect. Just six months, please. 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Breeden, I don't think you've met Mr. Copley. No. Oh, well, Delighted, I'm sure. How do you do? Hello. Mr. Copley is just saying that public school education can lead to arrested development. I say, by Joe, can it really? Ah, Breeden, I'm glad to see you could make the little gathering. Thank you, sir. Well, Mr. Torboy's another one. Now, he went to public school, too, you know. Did he indeed? So which one was that? Uh, uh, Dumbleton. Mm -hmm. And doesn't let you forget it. <laughs> oh, well, I shouldn't worry. Dumbleton ate a public school within the meaning of the act. <laughs> Not, isn't it? Within the meaning of the act. You've had a college education, Mr. Breeden, and I haven't, so you would understand about these things. What schools do you call public schools? Eton. Ah, uh, well, Harrow. Rugby? Uh, oh, no, 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 that's a railway junction. <laughs> But I'm told there's quite a decent dish sort of place at Winchester, gone off too particular. I once knew a man who'd been to Marlborough. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Breeden, I wonder if I might have a word. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Absolutely, man. I wanted to have a word. It's too small for these social gatherings, Mr. Copley. Yes, far too small. I understand, Mr. Breeden, that you're accustomed to seek the wide open spaces of the roof. Oh, yes, rather fresh air and all that, don't you know? <laughs> I've been taking pot shots and sparrows with the cat books. Crossroads are not surprised at, for everybody does them. More drawing out of it. But playing with catapults on the roof is really childish. Well, what with Miss Meatyard throwing paper darts around the office? No, really, a catapult's uncommonly good painting with the eye and all that sort of thing. You must come up one day, both of you. We'll all have competition. Not me. Too old for that sort of thing. I haven't had a catapult in my hands for 30 years, I suppose. High time you took one up again. How about you, tall boy? Sorry? Are you a dab hand with one of these? Uh, no, not me. I, um, I haven't the eye for it. Uh -huh. Oh, can't miss a tour boy you're such a tennis champion. Yes, well, it's not quite the same thing. Well, a game's eye is game's eye, surely. I think what I will say. Mr. Breeden, would you mind telling me where you got that catapult? Well, I bought it, of course. Oh. For one moment, I thought you must have been at my desk. I certainly have not. <laughs> I, mean, I, I wouldn't dare. Far too pure magic to go for ugly lady's desk. I should hope so. Miss Rustler keeps her letters from her gentleman admirers from that desk. <laughs> it's quite enough, Mr. Ingleby. But for one moment, I thought it was the one I confiscated from Ginger Joe last month. Last month? And you still got it? Of course. What a hard-hearted woman you are, Miss Rossiter. Well, I have to be. I mean, he nearly broke a window. If Mr. Armstrong had caught him... Oh, now, look here. Let the kid have it back. I like that boy. He says morning, sir, in a tone that fills me with the pleasant conceit of myself. Look here, I think, if I promise to speak to the lad sternly. Well, I'll hand it over to you, Mr. Breeden. But if any windows get broken... It is I who will be responsible. So long as that is understood. Let me get your cup of tea. <laughs> I'll let you have it after the uh, tea party. Oh, Catapults, indeed. Well, well, well. Did you see me, sir? Ah, yes, Ginger. Come in, come in, come in. Is this your catapult? Uh, well, yes, sir. I'd like to have it back. Yes, please, sir. Well, I haven't yet decided, Ginger, whether you're the sort of lad who can be trusted with a catapult. Any of the other boys got one? Oh, no, sir. Leastways, not here. Mm -hmm. Never shoot with it on the roof? On the roof of the office? Oh, no, sir. Good, good. I hope you realise, Ginger, that a thing like this could very easily kill somebody. Would it, sir? Well, I wouldn't like to try the experiment. You weren't larking around with it the day Mr. Dean fell downstairs. Oh, no, sir. Wish I may die, sir. Well, Miss Rossiter confiscated it ages before that. Here, you don't think someone catapulted Mr. Dean, sir? Well, it's, it's just possible, you know, Ginger. Can you remember who might have been standing around or passing by when she took it from you and put it on the desk? Well, well no, sir. Not right off, I can't. Well, if you do remember, let me know, would you? There's a good lad. Oh, of course, sir. And Ginger, mum's the word. You bet, sir. Oh, Mr. Tallboy. Oh, working overtime, Mr. Copley? Yes, it's a rush series of cut price ads for jamboree jellies. I wanted you to take a look at them. I'm sorry I haven't time. Leave them in my basket and I'll look at them tomorrow morning. But I was rather hoping. Good night, Mr. Copley.
Bryn? Yes, Miss Dean, good evening. Has she indeed? Yes, yes, that was the right thing to do. Uh, where are you calling from? Oh, well, that's quite close by. Why don't we meet and have a drink? Yes, I know it. Splendid. I'll see you there, then. Yeah, toodle -oo. Hello? Well, he's not here. Oh, oh dear. Well, there's nobody here except me, and I'm only the child. Well, just a minute, Mr. Copley. Telephone. Well, the devil's calling at this time. Don't they know we're closed? Well, it's the morning echo, sir. Very urgent. Asking for Mr. Torboy. I've told them they'd all gone home, but they said it's very important. Something about an advertisement for tomorrow morning, sir. Hmm. Was I better speak to them? Hello, Pim's here. What's the matter? No, Mr. Torboy's gone home. New tracks? Yes, well, I'm Mr. Copley, and new tracks is in my department. All right. Hold on. Just return in a guard book. It's the morning echo. They won't print the new tracks ad. They say it's obscene. What oh, cheek. Is it? I don't know. I'm looking for the drawing. Ah, here it is. Yeah. Unless well, he's pretty innocent for a nerve tonic. Well, they say they won't print it. Mm-hmm. Here's the headline. Are you taking too much out of yourself? Good Lord. I say, by Jove, I see what they mean. I mean, the drawing by itself is innocent enough, and so is the headline. Put them both together, and the morning echo can sell for half a crown a copy. Tallboy should have noticed this. <laughs> Someone should have seen a double meaning. Perhaps I can telephone Tallboy. Or even Mr. Armstrong. Well, they'd hardly be home yet, would they? Dear, oh dear, oh dear. Well, I shall have to do something. Well, look at that. I mean, uh, since you can't change the drawing, why not change the headline? What, without permission? Yes, well, I don't know. Perhaps I could uh, try. Hmm. Hello. Look, I see what you mean. Can you reset this headline? Oh, you can. Uh, could you give me ten minutes? I'll call back. Well, I'll get out of your way and let you get on with it. Good night, old lad. <laughs> Good luck. Third line. Start under W. Gaudi 24 point upper and lower. Lowercase W A S T E. Capital N E R V E. Hyphen. Capital P O W E R. Screamer. That okay? Good. Good night. You can count on Copley in a crisis. And what did the letter say? It was just a note from Diane de Montmorin. Hmm? She wants to know who you are. You seem to have made a remarkable hit. We aim to please. What have you done about it? I didn't know what you'd like me to do. You didn't give her my address? No. That was what she was asking for, but I didn't want to make another mistake, so I posted the letter to you. Quite right. Thank you. Well? Give it to her. Does she know I'm a pimp? No. I was very careful to tell her absolutely nothing about you. Except your name. I did tell her that, but she seems to have forgotten it. Splendid. Well, now, look. Tell the bright Diane that I am the most mysterious person. You hardly ever know where to find me yourself. Hint that I'm probably miles away, you know, Paris, Vienna, anywhere that sounds fruity. 
You can convey the right impression, I know. Phillips Oppenheim with a touch of Ethel M. Dell and Eleanor Glynn. Yes, I think I can do that. And you might say that you'll probably see me again when she least expects it. Suggest, if you don't mind being so vulgar, that I'm a sort of yellow dog dingo. Truly run after, but very hard to catch. Be stimulating, be intriguing. Well, I think I can manage all right. I'm sure you'll do it beautifully. I rely on you very much, you know. How's the inquiry getting on? I know how your brother was killed. How? With this. The charlady found it lying underneath the stairs and returned it to your brother's desk. After you'd been to collect his things, that's why you couldn't find it. But I still don't see her. Well, a short time earlier, she'd found a small round pebble lying in the same spot. I myself found a similar one by the skylight on the roof. Pebbles? Practice shots. Mr. Breeden, I can't really believe that it would be possible to kill someone by throwing a pebble at them through a skylight. No, you'd have to use a catapult. At the best, you'd kill him. At the worst, you'd send him tumbling down a dangerous staircase and he'd probably break his neck. But why use the scarab? So that anyone finding it would make the same assumption that the child lady made. That it had fallen out of his pocket. I see. Two. Ah, who indeed? It wasn't a burglar or anything like that. This was a deliberate attempt at murder. The light bulb would be put out of action beforehand. And he wasn't obliging enough to leave anything behind to identify him either. Oh, except a rather cheap pencil. Pencil? Yes, I found it on the upstairs landing. One of those pocket propelling things. Needn't hope for a handy mould of his front teeth, Peter. It is made of wood. Well, show, Polly, show, show, Mary, show. Mary, dear, get the pencil for your little brother. Well, by the way, Peter, there's a letter for you. Hmm? Oh, yes, I've just taken it out of flat four box when all this happened. Ah, yes. I can't see a letter here for Peter. Well, that's odd. It was no. there. It was a long mauve envelope with a gilt edge. Lady's fist, I'd say. Rather sprawly. Well, it's gone, has it? Apparently so. Well, that's very remarkable, old Parker Bird. And so is this pencil. Hmm? It's one of Darlin's. Well, what's so remarkable about that? Well, this is where my expert knowledge comes in. Darlin's don't sell these pencils. They give them away. If you buy more than a pound's worth of goods, they give you a pencil as a sort of good conduct prize. You will observe that it carries an advertising slogan. It isn't dear, it's darling. <coughs> oh, well, that's a great help. It should be easy enough to identify a criminal who's bought a pound's worth of goods at Darling's within the last six months. Yes, so. Wait a moment, wait a moment. I said that I had expert knowledge. This pencil didn't come from any of Darling's branches because it ain't on the market yet. Well, where did it come from? One of three places. The pencil manufacturers, Darling's head office, or our place. What? Pins? Mm hmm Darlings obligingly provided us with a gross of a half so that we could try them out. Just a minute. Are you saying... Quite. I think it highly unlikely that you had a deadly enemy in the pencil manufacturers or in Darlings' head office. It seems to me far more likely that the gentleman with the kosh or whatever blunt instrument came from Pims, guided by the address which you, with your usual amiability, kindly allowed me to give as mine. Well, I'm dashed. Do you mean to say it's you, you... Devil ought to be sitting here all mangled up and bruised in place of my poor afflicted husband. I think so, Polly. I most certainly think so. <laughs> Particularly as the assailants used to have walked off with my private correspondence. A letter, by the way, from Pamela Dean, enclosing a note from D. Anne de Momory. But this blighter who attacked you, did you manage to mark him by any chance? No, I'm afraid not. I did get a clutch on his throat, but he was all muffled up. Ah, you did that badly, you know, Charles. You should have bipped him one. Incidentally, I found the catapult that killed Dean. How can you be sure it's the same one? Because somebody has taken the trouble to wipe it clear of fingerprints. But have you any idea? Yeah, thinking, hmm? Oh, yes, I'm sorry, Polly. You're absolutely right. Well, I'm no end sorry, old lad, that you caught a packet that was intended for me. Yes, so am I. I'm only grateful that it's produced nothing worse than a bad headache. Yes, and I already had one.
trying to sort out this dope smuggling business. Incidentally, I would venture to say there was enough of the stuff floating around at Milligan's house the other night to poison a city. Where the devil do these people get it? Uh, if I knew that, Peter, I'd be on velvet. Mr. Cocker, we thought you were lost. The train was late. Um, Mr. Armstrong would like to see you. He's down in the corner. So I've informed him. If you please, sir, Mr. Armstrong says he's not. Oh, oh. Ah, Copley, looking for you, thinking of sending out the town crier. Better pop down and see old Armstrong Ponte. Yes, yes. Thought was curious with you. He's what? Yes. See the conquering hero come. Check and hips. I say that didn't go down too well. I really don't know, Mr. Jolliffe, but rest assured. Rest assured, the matter will be fully looked into, after which I shall return your call. Not at all. Thank you, Mr. John. Rather late this morning, aren't you, Copley? Yes, I'm sorry, Mr. Robson, my train was delayed. An accident on the line, I believe. We really must do something about these accidents on the line. Whenever one of Pym's staff travels, the trains break down. Well, now, Copley, I've just had an angry and very long telephone call from our client, Mr. Jollop, about the new tracks ad. I understand, or rather, Mr. Tallboy understands from somebody or other, that you altered the headline last night. Yes, I have an explanation. Mr. I'm very Johnson. glad to hear it. Now, the Morning Echo refused to print the original headline because it was obscene. Hmm? Obscene. I have it here. I see nothing obscene in there. Oh, yes, but consider it in relation to the sketch, however. My God. <laughs> <laughs> then they've got us there. <laughs> Tall boy, who wrote the headline and why the devil didn't you catch it? Well, it, it, it really never occurred to me. I, uh, I think Ingleby wrote it. Ingleby, of all people. A sort of sketch of the Schneider trophy. Eh? Mm. And then here you have the caption. Whiffle! Yep. Oh, damn. <laughs> Points bust. Can I borrow your pencil? Certainly. Keep it. I've got plenty. Oh. Where do you get them from? Miss Parton gives them away by the dozen. Just as well, I'm always losing mine. Ah. Come in. Oh, there you are, Mr. Ingleby. We are both wanted in the conference room. What did I tell you? Something wrong? He shouldn't have said it, Mrs. Breeden. In no call to say a thing like that. Not to me. No, no, I'm sure. <laughs> Look, I say, uh, who said what to who? <laughs> yes, well, it is pretty near the knuckle, but it's not my fault. My original rough was illustrated with a very handsome sketch of a gentleman beset with business worries. Not a couple of lookers that they've been making a night of it. The innocents in the studio choose to turn down my refined suggestions. Oh, yes. They're rather fond of cashing any suggestion put forward by the copy department. As far be it for me to suggest there could be any interdepartmental jealousy behind it, but the fact remains... Yes, well, never mind, Mr. Copley. You did the right thing. I'll send an explanation to Mr. Jollop. <laughs> you, you have a fit. He'll be surprised you passed it. Well, he may be. It isn't often I pass anything indecent. I must have been rather off colour that day. So much you, tall boy. Oh, dear. <laughs> Mr. Pym is going to have something to say about this, huh? I, I rather wish the thing had gone through. <laughs> You'd have sacked the whole department. Would have been very serious. Oh, well, of course it would. Well, now, that's settled. What about this whole page for soap? Oh. I hope you're satisfied with what I did, Mr. Armstrong. Oh, quite all right, quite all right. Very much obliged to you. Did your best in an awkward crisis. Now, let's get this soap question settled once and for all. Don't you go, Miss Rossiter. I'd like to take a note. I'll deal with new tracks, Mr. Tallboy. Don't you worry. No, I don't see anything indelicate in those soap bubbles. Mm. Have as many as you like. They're rotten pencils anyway. Everybody says so. Who's everybody? Oh, everybody's got one, and that's everybody in the office. Oh, well, in that case, I won't bother. Suit yourself. I bumped into Mrs. Crumb on the way here. She seemed dreadfully upset. Well, so would you be if you'd just been called a thief. No, I'd say that. Who was the bounder to suggest such a thing? So you admit you were hugger-muggering around my desk last night? God's sake, don't make such a run. I've got a splitting headache. I don't give a damn about your headache. There was an envelope in my desk last night with 50 pounds in it. Mrs. Crump said she saw you messing around with my papers. I've got your 50 pounds. I'm here to return it. It was extremely thoughtless of you to leave your property about for the charwomen to find. 
And I did not rummage through your desk. I was looking for the new tracks I had and this fell out. You mean to tell me that you had the all-fired cheek to take my money away? In your own interest. Interest be damned. Why the devil didn't you leave it in the pigeonhole and not be so damned interfering? What business is it of yours, anyway? It was the business of anyone who had the best interest of the firm at heart. Hmm. I'm considerably older than you, Torvald. And in my day, a group manager would have been ashamed to leave the building without ascertaining that all was well with his advertisement for the next day's paper. I don't need you to teach me my job. Pardon me, but I think you do. You interfere with my private oh, affairs. Fella. That's a lie. Pardon me. A barefaced lie. My God, there's a thought to conjure with. Pims in pornography. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, goody, butternut. <laughs> yes, and I found out something else. Yeah. Block-making people apparently told Tallboy yesterday morning they thought the headline was a bit hot. Well, well. And you have plenty of time to change it. Bags of time. Tallboy said that everybody had passed it and it was too late for any alterations. Hmm. It's a good thing Copley didn't get hold of that. <clears throat> I must say, I think Tallboy should have done something about it. Yes. I wonder why I didn't. Come on, Todd, it's a race. Won't you join us? <laughs> Suit yourself. Mind you don't get blood poisoning. We are closed for the night. Go home. I'm aware that we agreed that our last meeting should be our final one. But even the best of rules must be broken in a crisis. Yes, well, there is a damn crisis. Your splendid distribution system seems to have fallen apart. Look, empty! No supplies, no customers. I know. Now, what the devil went wrong? I know that, too. Well, there was one hell of a scene here tonight when I told them. One silly bitch went to me with her nails. Look at that. Threatened to shoot me. It's not good enough. I don't know how to contact you. I don't even know your name. And you never will, Major. I said I knew what went wrong. It won't happen again. No, well, it had better not. <laughs> or you'll make... Alternative arrangements. Why do you say that? Because I suspect you've already attempted to do so. In the course of my inquiries into the present mishap, I've uncovered certain distressing facts. Are you trying to double-cross me, Major? No, of course not. I should warn you that an attempt would be fatal, both to yourself and Mr. Momory. Already that young lady is becoming something of a risk. Dear Why? She knows even less than I do. But in both your cases, that is still too much. Harry Thorne's Bentley has much more power than this, but he's such a rotten driver. Oh, stop it, you fool. You'll have us in a ditch.
hiding! The terror induced by forests and darkness is known by the ancients as panic fear, or fear of the great god Pan. It's interesting to observe that modern progress has not altogether succeeded in banishing it from ill-disciplined minds. What do you want to behave like an idiot for? An advertisement, chiefly. One must be different. I'm always different. It's a cheap way of producing an effect. It's good enough for gin-soaked minds. On such as you, if you will pardon me, subtlety would be wasted. I wish you'd come down here. Possibly, but I prefer to be looked up to. Then you can stay up there all night. I'm going home. Your shoes ain't very suitable for a long walk, but if it amuses you, go home by all means. Why should I have to walk? Because I have the ignition keys of both cars in my pocket. I hate you. Then you're on the high road to loving me, which is only natural. We needs must love the highest when we see it. Can you see me? Not very well. Come down, Harlequin. I wish you'd come down. If you came down, I I could see you better. And love me better, perhaps? Perhaps. Then I'm safer where I am, knowing what happens to your lovers. Come down, Harlequin. I'll show you how to get a kick out of life. <laughs> Well? Well, I do. For what? For you. And what are you good for to me? I'm beautiful. Not as beautiful as you were. And in five years' time, you'll be ugly. I wouldn't want you for five years. I wouldn't want you for five minutes. <laughs> Tell me about Milliken. Where does he get his supplies from? Supplies. You know what I mean. You want one of Todd's regular lot, are you? Not at present. Well, don't. I loathe him. I'd do anything to cut loose from it. He knows too much, and besides it... He has got the stuff. Lots of people have tried to chuck Todd, but they always go back again on Fridays and Saturdays. Is that when he hands it out? Mostly. Not tonight. <laughs> you weren't there tonight, were you? It was too amusing. <laughs> He'd run short or something. There was the most hellish row. And that septic woman, Babs Woodley, was screaming all over the place. <laughs> she scratched his face. It was too amusing. <laughs> Rabelaisian, no doubt. Now tell me about Victor Dean. Told you. You introduced him to Milligan, didn't you? I'll get the stuff for you if you want it. Why can't I get it myself, direct from Milligan? Todd's a beast. Keep clear of him. Are you warning me for my own good? Yes, I am. What devotion. I mean it. Life's hell anyway. It's worse if you get mixed up with Todd. Then why don't you cut loose? Are you afraid of him? Not of him. The people behind him. <laughs> Todd's afraid too. <laughs> he never let me go. He'd kill me first. Oh, absolutely fascinating. I must get to know Todd better. You'd end by being afraid, too. Should I? Well, there's a kick in being afraid. Now, shall I take you home as I did once before? Exactly as you did before. Well, not exactly. You were drunk then. You're sober now. <laughs> well, comparatively. But with that trifling difference, the program will be carried out according to precedent. <laughs> Nothing. 
It's been wonderful. What's happened? Where are we? We're home. Where's your latchkey? Kiss me. Take off your mask. My poor child. Who would believe a Diane de Montmorey could fall for a fancy dress and a penny whistle? It isn't that. It's you. There's something strange about you. I'm afraid of you. You aren't thinking about me at all. You. You're thinking about something horrible. See, way. You're thinking about something. A, a hangman. There's a hangman in your thoughts. Why are you thinking about hanging? Well, upon my word, that is the oddest after effect of drink and drugs that I've met yet. <laughs> Thank you.